The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord! For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Welcome one and all, members and friends and those who are we are meeting for the first time. And there are a lot of folk we are meeting for the first time uh, who have come to celebrate Thomas and Tristan this morning, and we are so glad that you are with us. Welcome to this season of Advent. I'm going to invite you to just pause for just a moment, and since there are so many new people who haven't heard me say this before, um, in the Hebrew language, in the Greek language, they use the same word to say spirit that they use to say breath. And so every time you take a breath, Remember that the Spirit of God is with you. So pause for just a moment and take a breath or two. Christmas is almost here. And once again, a certain percentage of us are feeling the pressure to do more and be more so that our gatherings and festivities will be perfect as if there really was such a thing as perfect in this world. The phrase, I'm so busy I can't think straight, comes to mind this morning. It is not selfish to take some time away from the stress. Even five minutes alone with the intention of centering can bring a whole new perspective, a much needed reset. Like satisfying your hangry, but for a spiritual rather than a physical hunger. These times of quiet contemplation are not just good for the soul, they are good for the body and for the mind. So today we focus on sacred knowing that can happen when we allow ourselves to go deeper, to go inward to a place of quiet where we can imagine the voice of sacred knowing saying to us, do not be afraid.
The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant made, I made with the ancestors of Israel when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and the thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn.
light passes through a medium, it can be redirected in many ways. I want you to think about the crystals that uh, we have around us today. And if you know when you hang these in your house, you get beautiful little spots all over the wall and none of them are the same color exactly because it depends on how the light goes through them. And that's how we are thinking of scripture um, at this time is that you might have been told it means this, but you know, it depends on what's going on in your life and what, what is uh, happening around you, how you hear that scripture. And so uh, the same old scripture can sound new every time you hear it, depending on what part of you it's passing through. And so that's the spirit in which I hope that you will listen to the scripture today. Many of us look for signs to help us know what to do, or we wish we could have our own personal angel come and visit us and let us know the right next steps. This week we will remember that there is a Christ within us constantly birthing wisdom and a deep knowing if we will but listen with a contemplative heart. Let us speak out quiet in order to hear the voice that brings peace by gently saying, do not be afraid. Hear our first reading from Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahab, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as she Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahab said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to a test. Then Israel said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in, dread, will be deserted. open to God's presence. Not that we don't do that all the time, but we kind of think baptism is a special one, yeah? So, yep, go on back. Does Harry want to come too? I'm going to go up and go. And if there are any other young ones or young at heart ones that want to help us. I have some young at heart ones. To help okay. Them. All right. Excellent. So I'm going to invite Jordan and Joseph and Thomas. And Shelly and Sean and Tristan will be coming. And Mason and Madison and Kaylin and Kevin. who wants to be up here is okay as long as as long as baby and Tristan and I can get to the water. Yeah. <laughs> so we always invite our children to help us because this is a way to welcome folk into the congregation and to welcome folk into the bigger congregation that is all of Christianity. And so those folk back there 
most of them have been through a baptism before, and they are welcoming to this community. So come on up. Because God's grace is for every person of every age, we baptize with water and the Holy Spirit to remind ourselves of these young people's acceptance into the care of Christ's church and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. And so I ask, Jordan, Joseph, Shelley, and Sean, do you desire to have your children baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. And Tristan, do you desire to be baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say, I do. Okay. Madison, Mason, Kaylin, and Kevin, I would ask you as sponsors, and Tristan, as one who is old enough to make your own decisions, to join with these parents in making the following covenants. Will you teach these children, and Tristan, will you continue to learn about the life of Jesus Christ, that they will know the way of love and the freedom of new life in Christ, if so say we will. And do you promise to be Christ's disciples, choosing compassion, resisting oppression and evil, showing love and justice, and witnessing to the teachings of Jesus Christ as best you are able, if so answer we do. And do you promise to grow together in faith, celebrating the presence of the divine in all creation, furthering Christ's spirit of love in all the world, and surrounding these young ones with others who will help them to make a deep connection with the Creator? If so, answer, we do. And now, I speak to the rest of the gathered body here. Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace in baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to the ones about to be baptized as they live and grow in Jesus Christ? Yes. 
We promise our love, support, and care. Thomas is first or Tristan? <laughs> you got to see how it's done yeah. first, right? Tristan Elvin Lanfear, I baptize you in the name of God our Creator, who is like a father or a mother to us. In the name of Christ the Redeemer, who is known to us through God's Son Jesus. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who walks with you every day of your life. Bless us. Would you pray with me, please? We give you thanks, O Holy One, loving parent of all the faithful, for Thomas and Tristan, for the joy that they bring to our gathering and for the presence of the Holy Spirit's grace in baptism. Bless their parents and sponsors and the whole extended family that surrounds these young ones. Fill them with patience, courage, and love as they nurture Thomas and Tristan in faith. Grant us all the grace to receive, nurture, and befriend these new members of the body of Christ. Would you join me? Give them strength for life's journey, courage in time of suffering, the joy of faith, the freedom of love, and the hope of new life through Jesus Christ who makes us one. So, Kim, I believe, is going to come, has a little something, and then you know, what I'm hoping is that after Kim's presentation, if you would kind of walk up and down, because we have, a, we like to welcome you in song, okay? And so the congregation would like to get a closer look <laughs> and be introduced always. First of all, Kristen, we are so happy that you were baptized, and that we could be here to see it this morning. And so this is for you. My mom and dad, we ask that candle that's lit behind you, or one of them, you can take that at the end of the service, and this that you light it on the anniversary of this day, to remember the baptism. <coughs> Thomas, same to you. We ask that you like this. We're so thrilled to have you this morning. We ask that you like that on the anniversary to remember this special day and to know that we'll be here and we'll be here there with you always. Blessings and the peace of Christ. And as I said, if you wouldn't mind, we are going to welcome these young folk with a song. And uh, if you would, wouldn't mind introducing to the congregation while we do that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you don't want to. Baby probably likes it better when you're walking around anyway, right? <laughs>
We continue with our second reading from Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Look. The virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a child, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had given birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. You know, there's a lot of complaining about social media, and I've done my share of it myself. Um, there is some really nasty stuff that can be spread on social media, and what's going on now, and you hear it on the news every day about Twitter and Elon Musk, and what's to happen with social media, but then doesn't it depend on who you decide to like? And who do you decide to follow? And what are, who, who are those friends that you have on social media? It's not all good, it's not all bad. This week, as I was preparing for this theme, right? We've been following these themes and today was supposed to be all about sacred knowing. And so this week, I love synchronicity. This is what shows up on my feed from a friend, Sheila. It's a creation story from the Hopi Nation from Arizona. I want you to think about that scripture that we read at the beginning that talked about God would place the law on our hearts. And this is what the Hopi Nation says. Creation said, I want to hide something from the humans until they are ready for it. It is the realization that they create their own reality. The eagle said, give it to me, I will take it to the moon. The creator said, no, one day they will go there and find it. And the salmon said, I will bury it on the bottom of the ocean. And the creator said, no, they will go there too. And the buffalo said, I will bury it on the great plains. And the Creator said, they will cut into the skin of the earth and find it even there. And grandmother, who lives at the breast of Mother Earth and who has no physical eyes, but sees with spiritual eyes, said, put it inside of them. And the Creator said, it is done. How often do we take the time to look inside, to know what's right and what's wrong? I don't know about you, but I was kind of surrounded growing up with these messages that it was not okay to trust what was going on inside of you, right? Don't trust that internal voice because you have to know from the experts what's right, what's wrong. And it's a tough line to follow, isn't it? Because we who think in either ors think either we have to listen to an expert or we have to listen to our intuition. And what we're missing in the whole piece is that the deepest, deepest knowledge is not of the knowledge itself but of the connection to the whole. 
When you know yourself, you know that you are not better than your neighbor. Nor is your neighbor better than you. And so how much of the cutting off of the depth of knowledge that God has placed within us is a cause for this anger and angst that is rising among us because we don't have trust. We don't have trust for our own inner voice and we don't have trust for the voices around us. And so who do we listen to? Who do we believe? And we're all grasping at straws trying to decide who to believe in this world. And the first thing that sounds right to us, we grab onto it. And then we decide that all the other voices must be wrong. All the other voices must be wrong because this one sounds right to me. But maybe that's only just one piece of the whole puzzle of knowing. And I always go back, people who have been here a while are tired of hearing me say it, I'm sure, but I always go back to creation and what creation is telling us because God's creation has a lot to say to us about life. And I've been reading reminders again, yes, on my Facebook scroll, right? <laughs> But I've been reading reminders again that say the water doesn't ever drink its own water. The stream does not drink its own water, it offers it to the world. The sunrise just offers its beauty. No reason that we know of. Yes, it warms the plants, all of that stuff, but is it for itself? Or is it for the benefit of this entire world? Does it hold us all together? We have a responsibility to seek out that secret, that sacred knowing that God has placed within us. We know at our core when it's right. We know at our core when it connects us to God, when it connects us to one another, when it connects us to the universe. And that's why in every church I've ever been at, somebody has come to me and apologized and said, I'm sorry, I didn't get to church very often this year. But I find God where? On the lake, in the woods, away when you have time to shut off all of those voices around you and you can just listen with your heart. And then we come back together and if we're doing it right, we start listening to one another. What did you learn when you were in the woods today? What did you learn when you were on the river today? What did you learn when you were serving at a soup kitchen today? What did God talk to you about? What did God tell you? And when we bring it all together, there's this huge, beautiful picture of love and compassion and offering up who you are and what you are for the good of the whole. And that, to me, is sacred knowing. Not reading the right words, not understanding in the right way, but understanding the connection that we have, the connection that we've been given. And I'm sorry for those of you in school, I know you still have to give the answer that the teacher wants, right? But, <laughs> but don't ever forget to think beyond that. Don't ever forget <coughs> that that teacher's desire for you is only that you start to understand and that you keep asking questions and you keep asking your heart. I usually leave time for anybody who has a thought to offer it. And you might be saying, what does this have to do with Joseph and 
Joseph had his own way of knowing, right? The angel came to him in a dream and said, do what everybody around you is telling you not to do. And that is sacred knowing. And so, are there, are, are there thoughts to be shared this morning? And if not, that's okay too. We will sing about Joseph.
we have specific prayers to be offered aloud. And if you would, with each prayer, we hold these folks in the light of Christ. We lift up all of the sick, especially those with colds and flu and RSV and all of the viruses since they are so rampant at this time of year, or all of those who are suffering illness. We hold you in the light of Christ. And loving God, we hold Sarah in our hearts, Sarah who is still missing. Sarah, wherever you are, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. We offer gratitude for this blessed Christmas season, loving God, for all of those who celebrate, for all of those who struggle to celebrate. Please know we hold you in the light of Christ. We continue to hold prayers for the friends and family of Father Kluckman. Father Kluckman has been missing since walking away from his care facility in mid-July. For all of those involved, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. And prayers for those who are hurting what is during what is supposed to be this happy and joyous time of year. If you are mourning, if you are able to reach out, if not, please know somewhere in the depth of your soul that we hold you in the light of Christ. And of course, loving God, we hold Thomas and Tristan in our hearts this morning and wish for them all of the joys of life with you. Thomas and Tristan, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. Are there prayers that need to be spoken?
like prayers for my family, especially my dad, um, with another step in the end of life coming here. And just everybody keep us in your prayers. Julie and family know that we hold to you. Prayers for my mother in law, Lee Renee, who's having back surgery early tomorrow morning. Lee Renee, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. in this world who are living in poverty and conflict. Please know we hold you in the light of Christ. Prayers for Carolyn, who just had surgery. Carolyn, please know we hold you in the light of Christ. when you have heard the prayers we've spoken aloud. You know the prayers that remain in the depth of our beings. Hear us now as we read together these retranslated words that Jesus taught us to pray. <clears throat> Loving presence, luminous to all creation, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. May we reflect on earth the yielding perfection of the heavens. Help us to receive an illumined measure from earth this day. Forgive us when we trespass against others, human and other than human, as we forgive others who trespass against us. Keep us on the path of wisdom when we are tempted to take a selfish path. May it be your rule we follow your power we exercise, and your radiance that allures. May this be the truth that guides our lives, the ground from which our future will grow until we meet again. Amen.
Um, the Christmas Fund is the pocket out of which the United Church of Christ supports their ministers in that way. And so there are envelopes in the back if you would like to donate to that fund. Okay, now is there anything else? Sign-ups in the back for the welcome table, which will happen the first Wednesday of January. Um, and that's a fun event, so I think we should all come. Would you join me in a prayer of dedication, please? Amidst the uncertainty of Advent waiting, remind us again that God is always with us. God's love unites us. God's purpose steadies us. And God's spirit comforts us. Bless the gifts we offer this day, Holy One, our time, our resources, and our very lives. May they be used for your service and to multiply your compassionate kingdom here on earth. Amen. Would you stand if you are able and willing and let's sing together Isaiah the prophet has written the Lord. Thank you. 